meeting to order uh, via Zoom. Um, this meeting can be watched through our recorded Zoom on our FCAT uh, video on demand channel, FCAT Media, along with all of our other riveting select board meetings. And that is January 19th. I think I got the recording on just after you said that. Oh, January 19th. Yes, it is. Yes, it's being recorded. Thank you, Tom. January 19th and the meeting, it's a 601 right now. So we're going to start the meeting with minutes of our last meeting. Did everybody get a chance to read the minutes? Yeah, I did. Okay? Yeah, um, I do have some, so, so, just something about the, the that where um where it comes to me when I was talking about the meetings that I was at and there's a discussion about spending the CARES Act money, um the the way it, it, the the meetings reflected is that we can't spend the, that that I said that we can't spend the CARES Act money without breaking our our regional agreement at Frontier. Um, the reality is that we can't spend it at Frontier, but we can spend it at Conway Grammar School. So I. So with, if, if we could have that correction. Um. Sure. Great. And we're gonna talk about that more today. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, I would second, uh, second uh, the motion to uh, accept them as amended. Okay. Uh, uh, everybody say aye. Aye. Looking for head nods here, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. We have unanimous for accepting that, approving the minutes. Uh, we have uh, four warrants uh, instead of the usual three. We have a vendor warrant for $99,062.98 and a payroll warrant for $104,486.83. Payroll deduction warrant for $26,047.01. And then a student activities fund. Um, not warrant, but a, a check for $2,649.21. So everybody have any issues with any of those? No, those were entirely unremarkable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll make a motion that we, uh, that we accept the warrant, that we sign the warrant articles. Second. And second. And yes. everybody nod yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's unanimous for we're going to sign the warrants. So they will be on the table tomorrow or actually probably tonight. Um, and I know I can come in tomorrow and sign them. But we need at least two of us. Yeah, I, I can as well. Um, but I had a question for Tom about that. So it seems like there's still warrants for outstanding because of the conversion to the new um, accounting software. But they're not outstanding, but like, they're still not available for us to sign. No, uh, they are. We just don't have them in the usual form. Okay. Uh, but but all the information is here. Okay. So meetings attended by select board members. Uh, so Erica, you're usually up to bat first here. Um, nothing since last week. Okay. Bill. Yeah, so the the uh, the thirteenth was the was a school committee slash Deerfield Board of Health meeting um, to discuss Frontier and Union Thirty Eight metrics and um, and the winter sports. Um, so that was just another another meeting with a hundred and something people on the line and uh, emotions high and um, just. The feeling that this is just never ending, um, but uh, yeah. So, so I mean, the 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 school committees had voted to proceed with winter sports, although the winter sports are so heavily amended. It's you know basketball with wearing masks the whole time and no jump balls and uh, you know it, it, it's basically no contact with opposing teams and um, changing the ball out you know, and wiping the ball, whatever, just, uh, you know, no parents, no, no people in the stands, no par parents have to stay out in the 
parking lot, oh, and listen, listen to the game on the radio, um, uh, you know, and hope their kid doesn't get hurt so that they don't really need to be in the building because they can't get in the building. Um, it's just nutty times. And even that, a lot of people had a hard time with and just thought that, you know, any sports at all are just an unnecessary risk. Um, but, uh, you know, listening to that, to our health people on the school, we feel that it's manageable and the, the changes that have been done to all the sports are truly remarkable so that, um, they made it, I think really as safe as you can. So, um, it, it's up to the board of health to decide whether they want to overturn the school committee ruling. And of course, after a two hour meeting, they decided to postpone the decision for another two weeks. Um, because games don't start for two more weeks. So practices are going ahead. Um, well, I, I can tell you that FCAT is planning on covering as many of the winter yeah. sports as they can. So people can certainly listen to the basketball games at home. And, uh, and maybe in Deerfield, they might be able to watch them where they have Channel 15 that actually, you know, comes out of I believe they can. directly out of FCAT. We won't be able to do that, but. Uh, but, the, you know, we're only playing other Franklin County schools and it's just, you know, a schedule of six games, Mohawk twice and what, you know, just, um, uh, you know, so that's, that, that was that. And then um, Thursday was the Conway Grammar School meeting um, in, I did end up bringing forward on the 48 hour Latin no agenda uh, rule, the request from the town clerk about using the space for the town caucus. And I'm glad that Carl's here for this too, just to hear this because the school committee voted that on March 1st, the town may use the, the, uh, the, the grammar school for its town caucus. And the, the gymnasium is rated for, I forget how many people, 225 or something. The state now currently allows 25% capacity capacity indoors um they're thinking the crowd is going to be 25 if they can muster it if not it's going to be around 30 or so and that they want to set everything up but the school committee's decision was uh you know of course it's a select board decision ultimately but um the school committee said that it's contingent upon the board of health of conway uh agreeing uh or th that the event can take place at that location on that date so that's March 1st, gymnasium. So that's for Carl. But we'll be, we'll be getting to that too, I believe, a little bit, yeah. little bit later on. But so that was, that. we also had an extensive dis budget discussion, um, but it's really not worth relaying because of course we have no actual budget numbers about what our income is going to be. Um, so all we were really talking about was expenses. But if the governor keeps his word and, announces his budget numbers by the end of January, then February, we should be able to have a proper school budget meeting um, like we usually do every year. So we'll see. Okay, that was enough. Great. <laughs> You're a busy guy. Now, I'm with Erica. I had no, uh, no outside meeting this week. Uh, so public comments. Carl, you're the public here today. Oh, I am. Oh, uh, no, I don't oh, do you have any I'm comments. Far. I mean, and, no. <laughs> so. well, I mean, the, the, we, we got to meet. Uh, we're meeting next Monday. Um, the 25th, I believe, is our next board uh, health meeting, at which point we'll vote to approve the um, the uh, caucus to be held at the at the Conway Grammar School gymnasium. I mean, great. It's a no brainer. It's, it's just going to happen. Well, we have to vote it here today too, I think. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I expect we will, but that's still to come. Okay. Um, well, it's only 610 now and we're nobody from the finance committee. So let's, we'll continue on and hope they get here. I wonder if we should start scheduling them at 615 rather than 630. Uh, I, I think it's 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 good to get through as much select board business as we can. And and they did say that if we met at 6:30, occasionally they might meet at six to uh, do some 
um, talking amongst themselves first. So uh, I think do I I I should have put it after old business and new business on the agenda. Okay. So our first thing on our old business and as we mentioned is closing the town offices to the public. We've talked about this a little bit. Uh, do you want to talk about this, Tom? Uh, yes. Uh, the the discussion veered a little bit away from, from the intent of, of why I brought it on last time. Uh, so I just wanted to, uh, to uh, be able to uh, say what I wanted to say last time, which is that what I'm trying to do here is to get out in front of the, uh, uh, what's it called, the... Um, the B117, the, the B117 variant that's uh, more contagious, you know, which is now in Boston. And uh, what I was looking for was some sort of a trigger that when this more contagious variant starts getting closer, that we could close town offices before it actually came to town. So the, the whole discussion around Conway metrics um, wasn't really where I was going. I'm, I'm trying to be proactive here. And, and close the town offices so that it's not part of the problem. Uh, we can guarantee that. Uh, so that, that, was my, that was my thinking. So, you know, some kind of a, uh, some kind of a trigger of, that shows up in Western Mass or it shows up in, in Franklin and Hampshire County or something like that, I think would be appropriate here. Uh, and then we just close the Conway town office and we know we're not part of the problem. So uh, that's, that's what I was looking for, and I, I wanted to bring that back for a little more discussion, if anyone has any thoughts on that. Tom? Um, um, yeah. Right, right now, we have six cases of COVID in Conway. Six, six people that are in quarantine or in some part of the process of, of going through it. We keep, if you look every Monday at the website, we update the numbers of people. So, I mean, it's, it's still pretty, it's, it's still pretty small. Uh, we, we haven't really seen any of this upticky stuff going on. Uh, I know uh, Deerfield got hammered uh, over the weekend. They've got, uh, they, they went to like 23 or something like that, which, you know, I, okay. At that point, maybe I'd say we, we got a problem, but um I don't. I don't think there's a problem in Conway. Well, and my goal is to keep it that way, or at least to keep the town offices from contributing to the problem. And yep. again, I'm not so much yep. worried about about what we're doing now, but I'm worried about this new variant that's coming in that's more contagious. So my idea was to try to get out ahead of it and not wait until it got here to close the town offices. And, and, and Tom, I, I understand exactly like what you're saying, and that that rationale um, is just, um, you know, th that's exactly sort of what the teachers' unions have been pushing for. Is just, you know, let's just let's just close. If we just stay at home, then we can't get sick. Um, and you know, but th even that's not true because you still have to go to the grocery store and you still have to get out in the world. But but the, you know the um, you know my. The, the 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 thing is that if you do if we you know what we learned on the school committees is that if we if we have as metrics these global these global categories or a whole Franklin cat, cat you know then then you know wh th then what happens in Greenfield determines our fate and things like that and what you know we've learned that our health departments with their with their access to the information. Um, to, you know, just is really better positioned to say, you know, shut it down. And they can do that at the drop of a hat. They get these daily updates. Carl, yeah, you get, we, yes, you we get do. More, you get more than day. You get multi-daily up, multi-updates per day. Well, like, Carl, what's your recommendation for when we should, you know, and it's not, I mean, this is, we're talking about shutting the office, but it's just not having the public, not having the offices open to the public all the time. Um, well, I still conduct all their business. Yeah, but I, I think we got a really good handle on what's going on. We're looking at it daily. We're looking at it actually several times a day. I mean, I, I don't have, we, we've got four sets of eyes. We've got another person coming on board 
hopefully uh, to to fill up our fifth position. So so I mean we got a lot of people keeping keeping an eye on what's going on. I mean if if we upticked just a little bit even. I mean if we just saw all of a sudden three four in in a day, you know you know people coming in that that would get our attention. That that would get our attention, and then at that point we could say, okay, Tom, time to shut down for a while. You know, until so, things so calm are down you saying, again. You know, 10, 10 in Conway, or I mean, yeah, you know, no, I'm, a, a I'm saying, I'm saying, how many in a day? So, 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 let's say we watch this every day, and 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 um, we get one day where we have three or four contacts in in a day. Now that would get my attention. You know, and now I say, okay, now I'm seeing a trend. I'm seeing, I'm seeing something happening, and 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 at that point, I'd call Tom. Hey, hey, you know, I think you guys ought to, you know, shut down for a while. But I, right now, that isn't happening. Ever, ever since the the party at the Polish club in Deerfield, uh, and and we're still seeing a few of those. <laughs> They're fading out. But ever ever since then, we we you know we we haven't seen any any huge influx of people. Well, but but and um, and again, I, I my my point is not to talk about. What's going on now? Um, what I'm particularly concerned with is something that's going to spread faster than we may be able to react, which is this new variant that comes in. So that's really uh, mostly what I'm interested in tracking. I think we've done a good job with the with the way things have been. The thing is, the environment is changing now, and I just wanted to be sure that we were um, on top of that instead of behind behind it. You know. Well, I I, th I think we are. I I would I would say we are. Erica, what were you saying? Well, well, I, so it, it's I not out here yet. I'm sorry. Pleased to know how much traffic town the town offices get. I mean, apart from people who would still be able to access town office, if we did close to the public, I mean, how many members of the public, on average, every week are coming to the town office to do business? Uh, I, I don't have that figure, but I can get it. Well, we we do ask people to sign in in front, yeah. and I've even I was yeah. even I was even chided for not signing in. So I sign in. I sign, I sign in. in. Yeah. Um, but, 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 and, thank you. But, thank you. But, but we would still we still the, be but, going there. We'd still be signing in. Bob Baker yeah. would probably still be going there and signing in. Jan would be going. You know, at, like. How much traffic are we really talking about? It, it appears to be about like two, two to three per day kind of a thing, if you ask me. Just um, and, and but what we're talking about is the possibility of staff getting infected, and the and and the town office having to be you know deep cleaned, whatever that really means. Um, and I'm again, I'm trying to be proactive here and not reactive regarding this this particular new strain. I think we're doing really well for the current situation. Um, I just, I'm, I'm worried about the new strain. I think, I think it's only a question of time. I think we all are. I think, you know, the, what, the, 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 from what, you know, be, the Board of Health meeting that I was at on Thursday, the, the, they said the numbers are starting to trend in the, in the prop, in, in, in a better direction for us that, that they're optimistic that they were more optimistic about winter sports than they were the couple of weeks before that, just because their indications are that a couple of weeks from now is going to be better than now, not worse than now. Um, that um, in, in terms of overall numbers in our, in our four towns. So that's, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, Tom, that, that, that um, there's no, you know, I, I, it, it's, it's a, it's a balancing thing. The, the, I think being open, being open for business is a service, is an important, uh, you know, thing for the town, um, and we, we have to balance like the risks versus the rewards and everything. And I think the the health department just has the is really well positioned to catch it in the bud before it's a, you know, b before it's um a. a, 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 a real health risk for people. I, I, I do believe that they just, I, I've been exposed to sort of the quality of their information and it's impressive. Um, well, Carl, so it's good that you're here and all this. And, and so, you know, yeah. we, we can, 
we can hold off and you know we're going to probably talk about this every week at our meeting over at looking at how it's going yeah um, no that, that's that's no problem i mean yeah. i we, we will when things get the slightest bit snaky you'll get phone calls i mean we're gonna we're gonna say okay it's time to li limit our exposure I mean, it's probably only been the last week or two that we watched it go from Britain to being found in the U.S., to being mm -hmm. found in Connecticut, to yep. being found in Massachusetts. Uh, and, and Carl, the, the Board of Health does not need select board approval to have the town go to an all remote town hall. Oh, no, hall. no, that's no, what, it's just, you, it, it you would just be a call to yeah. Tom. But that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's all I would do. I would just call yeah. Tom and say, hey, you know, we, yeah. we, 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 got, we got four hits in the past. 48 hours i think it's time yeah uh -huh. and just consider this as one more responsibility put on your shoulders just what i need just yep. what i yep. need thank yeah. you yep. thank yep. you yep. phil <laughs> the, fact, the fact that we have only two or three cases is a two-edged sword you know it means that we <sighs> don't have many people coming in putting people in the office in danger but we, it also could be looked at that it, we wouldn't be losing much if we shut down the office you know not if, that many people actually have to come in Most if you if you look at the 351 municipalities in massachusetts okay we are next to the bottom there's one town out in berkshire county somewhere and 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 they they got us beat in terms of but we're the second we're the second lowest town of all the towns in all the municipalities in in massachusetts and I like that when we had none. Now we're saying you're saying we have. Six. Well, yeah, you know, yeah. So it, well, well, you're going to get some. I mean, that, that that's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. So we won't shut down until Carl gives us the word, and we'll keep talking about it. Yeah, and we'll stay in touch. We'll stay in touch about it. You know, not a big deal. Great. New business. So. Why don't we do, well, we'll do them in order on the agenda since Carl's got to stick around for a while. So the first item on the agenda was giving additional Conway CARES money to Frontier. So you mentioned this yeah. earlier. So that's, that's really, um, it's much less problematic uh, to, to, for all concerned, just to focus on the expenses of the grammar school um, for, for, for that. And, and I, you know, I did, I did, I, I think when we talked about this last time, I did. I, I asked Tom to talk to Shelley and the, the you know, the, the finance staff at the at the um, at Frontier, and he did, and so and that was very useful. I, I, they reported back that that was very useful discussions, and um, you know, I got sort of to, to have the superintendent, the principal, and the finance, the business advisor, sort of really all on the same page. Oh, right. Much more better uh, about how to proceed, and and just you know, it's. It's tens of thousands of dollars that if we don't spend, um, we give back to the federal government. So, but uh, we have a year to, till then. Yeah, and, and the real, you know, the the you're you're you're, you're not allowed to to, uh, uh, to 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 build, you know, to to put a certain expenses on there like labor uh, labor costs or um, you know. So so even though our our you know our uh, for our, our lunch service at the grammar school is due to lose thousands, many thousands of dollars this year because um, we uh, the, they required us to make all lunches free and also provide breakfast for free to everybody, and they prevent us from accepting any money from anybody. So all of our expenses stay the same, but we can't have any revenue. But we can't we can't bill that loss as a CARES expense. Um, which seems ludicrous. Does the to school me, but... have a good idea of the things they can spend it on? Yeah, and and it, it's it's sort of a, a renewed focus on on this as an opportunity. You know what what I was really trying to get them to focus on is expenses that would affect the assessment of the town, um, and the the those are going to be tough to come by. We might be spending it on things that um, aren't going to be at you know. Uh, we might not be seeing the tax benefits to the town from spending some of the some of it there, but um, like what kind of expenses? Uh, the all of the, uh, the, the, the there's a lot of things that were done that have not you know the 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 um, 
uh, the air circulation stuff, mm -hmm. all the new fans and the new motors and this and that to, um, you know, plus the constant monitoring and all that. And so there's, um, th there is expenses there, the rentals of the tents, the, the purchasing of every, of a blanket for the winter blanket for their, for, for every child has their own winter blanket. So we could most use of, of outdoor spaces. Um, Some of that was in the student activities fund that we just signed. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it was, but the blankets, um, uh, laptops or, or Chromebooks. Yeah. And that's going to be another one um, that we're, that we're going to be able to use some of that money on because the grammar school for their, for the older kids that all have the Chromebooks at home, the, um, the, the rate of destruction of Chromebooks has skyrocketed. Yeah. Um, so the replacement costs are higher. So it's things like that, but it, re it will require a determined effort um, to parcel out what can be, you know, and all that. So, so that was very useful. What the whole getting together with all of them and getting them all on the same page. So I look forward to seeing the results of that next month um, where we'll be able to talk about how much that cares act stuff lowered our assessment and what's all, what it's all being spent for. But I, I also know that there was, that, that, that it's not really okay to spend all of it too, that the, you need to save some of it because the town might have some unanticipated expenses. It's a whole year. You know, you, you have till the end of December to spend it this, this time. So, um, so well, it looks like it seems it like if there's, like, if there's something yeah, we should it, have that we can spend it on, I don't see why we wouldn't do that. It's all yes, money. We will, we will be, but I, you know, I, for instance, what, what, you know, the, the things that, that like made Deerfield spend all of their CARES Act money were things like um, an emergency, you know, the, the, the first responders needing to be quarantined at a hotel um, for two weeks, which, uh, you know, you got to feed them, you got to do, you know, yeah, everything. So that, that, that adds up quickly and we should be prepared. You know, we don't, if we spend it all on the school, then, then we would be unable to respond to something like that. But at the same time, if we wait till the beginning of December, that might be too late to spend it on the school. So yeah. like everything else, balancing, discretion. So we have this, we have the uh, finance board now with us. <laughs> Looks like you have a good quorum, Alan. Yeah. Okay. So why don't we start the looking at the budget? Tom, do you want to do that? Uh, sure. Um, there's, there's, uh, presentation from me, and then there's the there's there's the board of health. So, Carl, why don't you uh, why don't you take the uh, board of health's budget and run with it? Did you want to do your general update first, or yeah, why? Uh, uh, no, just, that that's fine. I'll I'll just I'll mention something in my update. Okay, good. Tom, can you put the budget on the screen again? Did you hear that, Tom? Yes, I heard it. Okay, good. <laughs> I think you heard it. Good. Thank you. <laughs> well, I printed it out because the text is so small. I have to get my magnifying glass out to read it. Yeah, fine print. Yeah. Beware, beware of the fine print. <laughs> Uh, okay, Tom. Do you want me to go over the sh over the budget sheets, or we're going to do something? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. No. Go okay. ahead. Yay. Okay. Um, yeah. What you're looking at here, Tom? Could you scroll the top down a little bit? So uh, we're missing the first. Ah, there you go. There you go. Um, yeah. What we're looking at here is a budget that is roughly two thousand dollars higher than last year. Um, and considering some of the new expenses that we've had to, uh, you know, bring Carl, on board. Carl, could you excuse me a minute? Somebody's yeah, got sound on in the background. Uh, I'm yeah, not, it's not me. Nor uh, me. But might be me. Let me uh, <laughs> fix that. Somebody's got, I don't know, wrestling or something going on in the background. But thanks, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry, Carl. No problem. Yeah, we're, we're looking at a budget that is, is roughly $2,200 uh, above last year's budget. 
and, and considering some of the new challenges we've had and, and other things that we've had to budget for, I, th I think that we did a really good job. Uh, if, if you look at the bottom line there. Yeah. Um, so um, I don't know, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. We track our, our um, we, we track our expenditures uh, to, to, to it's, it's terrible how close that we, we run that stuff. Uh, and, um, but we, you know, hey, we're, 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 we're putting budgets together in October and we've really only got a couple of months of 21 to use, but we extrapolate that out. We take each the, the expenses of, of each month and we, we, uh, we run those numbers out and uh, say, okay, well, this is only three months. So we still got, you know, a, a, another uh, nine months to go here. To, and so what are we going to spend by the, you know, the end of, 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 of the fiscal year, of end of June in 2021 and, uh, or 2022. And um, that, that's how we do this budget. So uh, in things are a little weird, uh, but it's, it's by and large, it's pretty stable. The only thing that's unstable is, is um, the, um, uh, the Franklin County solid waste management assessments. They, 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 Kind of go around from from year to year, um, and the uh, the dues from the um, Franklin County Solid Waste Management. Oh no, I'm sorry, oh, from uh, the Frontier uh, EDS, and uh, and uh, also uh, the Fracog, because we have a, we have uh, Lisa White as a, as a town nurse, and we use the Fracog for that. Um, but other than that, we're, we're 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 pretty good at tracking stuff. And this is what we've come up with for month for numbers for next year. So, so you've cut way back on the recycling cost. I'm sorry. You've cut back on the recycling. Yeah, cost. yeah, yeah. Well, we found that we, we found that the worst case scenario that they painted that we allowed for, uh, and and we're still working on is is has not been that bad. Sent me a text. So uh, it, it's not that there's a lot of rebate coming back yet. I don't think that they've they have found, you know, uses for a lot of the of the recycling cool stuff, now. but uh, but but yeah, it, it it's not as bad. So we 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 cut back, and you know maybe we'll get bit by the end of the cycle. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe not. That's certainly something that all the towns are talking about. Oh yeah. Oh no, that's it. No, it's it's huge. Well, not only that, the the um, waste management. Waste management on the first three months of this news cycle had their numbers completely wrong. They they totally miscalculated what those numbers should be, and they had to come back through through Janamine and the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District. They actually had to come back with amended bills, and and all of a sudden we're going, well, wait a minute, this isn't so bad anymore. Mm. So, you know, I I you know I don't I don't know what they're using for calculators there. Or, or who's using the calculators, but um, yeah, they, they way underestimated what they what we were going to end up spending this year. So, are you tracking how close you are this year to the twenty thousand from last oh, yeah. year? Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, are we on budget, or you you think we're way um, under budget? Let me take a look. See here. Uh, oh, recycle. Recycle trucking. Which line item are you talking about, Carl? I can't make it out. Um, it's four hundred. 400. Yeah. Okay. Trucking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and then, trucking. Oh, no. Recycle disposal. I'm sorry. 405. Four, four it's it's four about five. five or six up from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're okay. We're like at about $4,000 so far. Right. You know, in 2021. And, and we've projected that, you know, we, and we have 16,000 remaining. <laughs> And and we're you know halfway you know into our into our into our year, so we've got a lot a lot of money left over. Um, in, Steve, in, in you'll that see that off. recycling is the one that's blank all the way across until yeah, last I see year. That. And I the see reason that is that we always made money from recycling. <coughs> right. You know, essentially, yeah. we ran out of you know the Chinese stopped buying all of the U.S. recycling. No, and, they start take, stop taking our garbage. And now we have to dispose of it and pay for that. Right. Yes. So, it's so how much is the uh, salary going to go up? Salary and wages. There was an email from you, Tom Hudson, this morning that 
we have to raise the minimum wage, so therefore the salary and wage line for how much is that going to change? Any only idea? only a couple thousand dollars. I mean, not not even thousand. All right. Yeah, not not even enough to to to. Mm -hmm. I mean, we could get these guys up to a decent hourly rate, uh, you know, with, with with without spending a whole lot of money. We're not spending we're we're not spending our budget as it is. We have people who are are out. We have people who are. Uh, no longer, or I shouldn't say they're no longer with us. They they kind of hang around on the periphery, uh, <laughs> but they're not drawing salary. So so, uh, and and we and we're we're also down a, a board of health person. So the stipends, the stipends are going to be, you know, that that far. Ah, oh, come on, shut up. Oh, here we go. All right, somebody else has got the phone. Carl. So, Carl, yeah. can I ask just about the, the notes at the bottom of the spreadsheet? The first line, it said placeholder includes two and a half percent pay increase. Well, but that's that's next, that's for the that's for the uh, employees. Right. The But then the next line says no increases were the payroll amounts are the numbers that were requested for 2020. No increases were given. Right. We didn't get them. Yeah, that's true. All right. So that was so you're referring to last year. So, yes. Yeah. So uh, th th this is a review from last year. Actually, it's what what you're looking at there is going all the way back to 2017. Right. So so, so the, on the pay increases at a at a past um, select board meeting. Didn't we I'm sorry. I, Say I again, please. We, I thought we approved pay increases for um, the uh, transfer station employees um, at a previous select board meeting. Oh, cool. Well, no, I thought we did. All right. Well, I, 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 I don't know. I wasn't there. Approving them for last year? No, uh, not for not for last year, but going. I, okay. All right. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Going forward, maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tom talked about the fact that the, the budgets aren't looking a lot better than we expected, and so as we go forward, yes, we can. I, I you know, I'm hoping we return to giving giving raises, <laughs> but, uh, but, but last year we were petrified of the budgets being terrible and we did ask everyone not to provide any raises and that was painful. So Tom, Tom, do you think that we could put on the agenda for next week's meeting with the finance committee, a discussion of the general pay increase? Even It's a little bit preliminary, I know, but um, uh, it'd be nice to get on the same page about just what we'd like to do if we, if we can afford it. Um, Alan, uh, would you like to do that? I know we, we do usually wait until after we've reviewed the rest of the budget. I'd like to wait for the rest of the budget, see what the departments are proposing, and we'll see. I mean, my thought is the personnel committee, I, I'd like to have some input because when we've done these spot raises here and there, to my understanding, it has not been done consistently throughout the entire uh, number of people on the payroll of the uh, town, excluding Conway Grammar School, and that it's been the source of some friction internally. So, you know, if we can do so in a way that the personnel committee can weigh in first, I, I would actually prefer that. Because right, there, there's even sort of two mm -hmm. separate issues, really. It's just what we want to do for this year and then whether we want to do anything about last year. Um, yeah, I, I agree. But last year, too, but I, I'd like to have the personnel committee weigh in a little bit there because my understanding was last year, some of the some people were going to get raises and some were not. And that was the sort and also the con the raises were not at the level of the union contracts, you know, for the IAs and teachers from the Conway Grammar School. And that was the source of some further internal friction. Yeah. Yeah, I did my best. Um, well, we'll certainly get to it. Yeah. I just make a note that the uh, Michael Cheller, a town accountant, has said that we're 43.11% of budget in terms of salaries, wages, and general expenses for the Board of Health budget through the end of, uh, of December. So, I mean, thank you very much for uh, Carl and company for doing a great job. Nice. Thank you. Well, it's a tough, it's a, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's not, it's not easy yeah. to do. And you do it voluntarily, which is really, thank you. Well, I get, I get a stipend.
<laughs> Peanuts. Well, which is another thing. Which is another thing we ought to bring up. <laughs> but, yeah, now and then. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. Say, when I first moved to Conway, um, it was living in a little house right across from Town Hall. Someone, mm -hmm. it might have been you, Carl, literally came to my door, knocked on it, and told me not to drink my water because they. <laughs> <laughs> I was Probably like a mother, me. I had a little baby. I was like, oh my God, like the customer service in this town. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's, it's a good town. It's it, yeah. Everybody's pretty tight. I do I do all the Title V work for the Board of Health. So, so it was probably um, you if it was 20 years ago. Because <laughs> it, it, it would have been me because I've been here for 20 or 21 years. Yeah, okay, at 21 least. years. So I fully appreciate the work that the board of health does because yeah no we we do we do all the i do all the title five work for for conway also so you know title you know title five inspections and perk tests and yada yada and uh i i try to keep it i try to keep it running really good and and taking care of everybody and and taking good care of people and and i think by and large the people are happy well with, coming from the way the board city. of health treats them and having like you know the chair of the board of health show up at my door to keep me safe was well. I wasn't the chair at that <laughs> point. Well, it, yeah, it was. Yeah, I was like, wow, this town. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was. I was. I was probably a, a, a an underling at that point. Well, I fully appreciate. There were only three people on the board of health, and I think I was just on as a an associate. That's why I was an asso associate at that point. Carl, you list an item called other services. That, oh yeah, you know that went yeah. up noticeably, and I, I, you know, but then, then you, you have a little thing that says you could talk about it on request. So yeah, I guess I'm requesting. <laughs> okay, no, that's good. Other services was something that was broke out by the finance committee and the select board. Well, it, somewhere in the 1980s or, or somewhere in the 1990s, probably just before I came on board. And what they did was they lumped a bunch of stuff together and, and it's only oh, maybe 15 items, um, but, but everything we get charged for like uh, CFC recovery, electronics, the pickup of the, of the car, um, Gaylord boxes of the, of the electronics gear in it, uh, fire control, um, porta potty, the porta potties on, on others, um, propane cylinders, propane delivery, um, equipment repairs, uh, scrap metal, uh, snow and mow, which this year uh, is is going to uh, go up to about five thousand dollars because we really yes it has gone to five thousand dollars because um, we we used to rely on the good graces of the of the uh, road boss to clear the the uh, transfer station and I had a long talk with him this past fall. And um, we spent an afternoon out there and just negotiated and actually it came down to, I'm just hiring a private contractor. So now when we get a little snow, a little something, there's a phone number to call. We got the Smith brothers to, 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 to come out and do the plowing and whatnot. And they're, they're doing a very good job. And I had no idea what it was gonna come to. So I said to Ginny, just put $5,000 on that slot and we'll see where we go from there because it's a brand new item. But yeah, so, the compost. So that's one of the things that that caused this to jump way up. Then. It yeah, and the com compost. Before. Compost yeah. also caused it to jump up. We got composters and other services too, and and all of a sudden we're paying. You know, it's going to be thirty five hundred dollars this year, uh, to pay somebody to haul the the compost out. But it's a great program. I mean, we're we're filling those bins. People are really really kicking in, very very nicely. So so yeah. we're accomplishing something with with that. And um, yeah, so we got about, you know, we've got $22,700 in other, okay. And, and we've said, I've said at every budget hearing I've been at since, wow, 2007 maybe, that I'd really like to see this broken out and just made as line items, you know, along with all this other stuff here. I just, just bring it, bring it in this, instead of there's this other services thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, a, it's all line stuff, or it could all be fit in to, to line stuff. So uh, I don't so, know. So Carl, how just how did it come to with the highway boss that that we are that the town is no longer providing that service for the health department for, for the transfer station? It, Good question. It's just a Good question. 
Um, yeah, we, uh, it, it just was always kind of an understanding from what I understand. Um, you know, it's a, this is a learning process for me also. It's always kind of been an understanding between the Board of Health and the road boss that they, that, that when they were done with all their stuff, they were gonna come up and do the, um, um, do the, the, the transfer station. Well, you know, we, we have other th problems with that in, in that, you know, if, if there's, if it's a pickup day, if it's Monday morning and we're, and, and they're going to pick up from the weekend, I've got trucks sitting outside that gate at 530 in the morning trying to get in. And, and if it's all snow and, and it's a mess, they can't pick up. And, and of course we've got five more days in the week they can, but they got other schedules they're dealing with. And, and so uh, it, it's really convenient for waste management to have you know a clear a clear transfer station and i couldn't get that kind of service from the, the road boss from the, the road crew unfortunately um they, they would be by you know if we had a snowstorm overnight you know they may be by 4 30 in the afternoon to to clean the the transfer station out which is is not good and then we got days where we where we have to be open where we got people coming in and 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 we don't want people tromping around in deep snow so actually i getting the you know getting a private contractor in and um getting the the tsa is to do a little shoveling on the steps and you know the, the small places that piles can't get it, it it's really worked out well and if, if i can pull this off for five thousand dollars i'm i'm ahead of the game but i'd much rather have the town doing it you know don't, don't get me wrong I, I feel like I'm running a corporation here. You know, I got I got all kinds of vendors and you know people people on on the outside coming in. Where you know I'm, I sit there and watch all these trucks go by. You know what I'm saying? Wow. You know, I we, we we've got all this equipment and and yet it's not being used on on town property on on town you know town equipment. So I don't know. I mean, you subcontract you you subcontract the town offices and the in the town hall out to out to um, uh, Deb Craven, you know, to, to clean all that off. Uh, so I, you know, I guess we just, she's an employee. Well, well, yeah, but okay. Well, that makes it different. Yeah. I mean, so, so, um, so this is what we're doing now. And, uh, if, if, if ever, you know, you guys want to step up and, and, and I think what's going to have to happen is Ron's going to need more resources in order to have people plowing, the, the in clearing the transfer station on demand, which is kind of what we, we got to do uh, in, in order to, 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 to make it happen. So, you know, and I, and I don't think he's got the resources either. So well, he's understaffed. He, he, he doesn't have a full he doesn't have his full complement. He's missing what two people now. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, right. Um, At least two. Yeah. So but but at the same time, you know, the, the optics of of the town, the, the the town crew plowing the road and then turning around at, at the gate. And, and they play plow the gate shot. <laughs> oh, they plow the freaking gate shot. <laughs> oh. There's a, there's a bridge of snow right across the, 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 the gate to the, to, to the, to the, the transfer station. The kids that are coming in to, 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 to plow it. Got to clear the, clear the gate out so they can open it up. I mean, and, the truck just, the truck just goes right by. <laughs> And the idea of plowing on demand just was something that the highway boss was un unable to commit to? Or... I, I don't want to speak for him. Right. Okay. I, I want to speak to my understanding of our conversation. I, I know Ron. Ron and I go way back. Right. You know, as, a, as, a, as an excavator and, and, and whatnot else. I mean, the, the, you know, my, my mother-in-law from Buckland knew his mother. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it is one of these one of these family tie things. Once you get out here, um, yeah, I, and and I don't want to speak for him. I mean, if if you wanted to have a meeting, yeah, be, between us or or something like that, where we could we could talk this out, I I'd, I'd be I'd be more than happy to do that. But I no, Carl, I, don't... I think you've characterized it well. You know that 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 the agreement was that he would do it when he could. And yes. you really wanted it done when it needed to, you know, it really needed to be done, not when he could do it. And he's out yes. plowing the roads and th that, to, you know, I think correctly is a higher priority than plowing out the transfer station. Um, right. So. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And like I said, I got the Smith brothers out there, and they, they do a bang-up job. I mean, they're, they're good, good guys. They are. Yep. Even though they are from Waitley. Well, that's that. We, we don't hold. I'm from New Jersey, okay? Yeah. So, so don't, yeah. you know. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey, and that's got to be that's got to be worse. Has the uproar died down about selling the dump passes and and getting them on and yeah that, yeah that yeah it, for it, a while. Why well, I think I still think we got to we got to work on dump dump stickers. We got to work on how we do that. Uh, we we went online and um, oh um, uh, Warner um, Jan Jan. Jan, yes, thank you. Jan, Jan Warner came up with this great idea, and we we all kind of trained through it and stuff like that. But there's there's some holes in it. There's there's some there's some there's some definite holes. So we we got to be able to staunch those those holes a little bit, and we'll have a much better time this year, I think. But I think the method, the 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 basic method we used, rather than selling them at the transfer station and, and allowing people to go online, or go and and the COVID thing killed us at the at the at the town office too. I mean, yeah. there there were just times when they weren't open or they wouldn't let people in, you know, kind of kind of stuff. So we, you know, we we had a problem there, and hopefully next fall or late summer, you know, it, it'll it'll be better. Great. Any more questions for Carl? Not for me. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, everyone. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. All right. No problem. Um, all right then. I'm. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna boogie out. Thank you very much for your time and uh, a good conversation. And it's always good meeting with you guys. I always. I always enjoy these. So. Um, thank you, Carl. You okay. Great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. All right. Oh, and we right. got, we got, I think we got somebody coming on board to replace Marie Eichen. Um, uh, yeah, we got it. Uh, somebody's been poking, you know, coming in and really wants to be part of our operation. There's a, a Jackie Choate, who's a, a, a nurse yeah. and uh, actually works with the, works with the Frontier um, uh, EDS. So uh, and, and she's really eager to come on board. So I, I, I'm 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 really feeling good about it. And uh, we may be hearing you may be hearing from us with a, a plea to appoint her to the board of health real soon. Okay. Sounds, sounds like a good recruit. Well done. Yeah, very good recruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, okay, I'm taking take off. Yeah, do you, Carl, do you have any report on COVID or anything in the town? Yeah, we were we were talking about that before. Uh, we've only got six people with either either suspected to have COVID or tested positive, or they're in quarantine, or they're sick. There's, there's only six people in the whole town. We are we are of the of the 351 towns in Massachusetts municipalities in in Massachusetts. We are next to the bottom in terms of the per capita. Uh, cases of COVID in in town, so so we're doing really good. Uh, but there's we're keeping a very close eye on the numbers, and uh, you know if if the numbers move quickly, like they all of a sudden we get like three or four in a day, you know we're we're going to start getting a little little twitchy, and and we're going to get a hold of Tom, and 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 say hey you know <clears throat> time to time to shut down the town offices, but but right now at the moment. And, and it looks like for the foreseeable future, everything is very, very calm in town. Oh, you actually have how many cases right now? Six. Six positive cases. Six. Yeah. Okay. okay. No, six well, cases, six positive tests. And, 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 and of those six, we have some, in fact, there's some still left over from the Polish club and Deerfield party. Um, so, so uh, yeah, they're either positive, David, the tested positive, you know, it, it being suspicious, or or they're they're or they actually have it to some extent too. So so we're not we're not doing bad at all. Nobody's in the hospital. No, nobody's in the hospital. Great. Every, everybody's at home. Wonderful. Yep. Thank yep. you. Okay. Appreciate it. All right. If Thanks nobody has anything else, <clears throat> I'll put you We have then. some other budgets to look at. <clears throat> Thanks. Uh, not mine. Not but not Carl's, no. 
and, see you later. I'm not sure. Who, thank you. But nobody else is here right now. Who, who's coming in? Oh, we got town administrator right here on the screen. No, the, okay, you're right. These are all town administrator budgets. Yep. Which is actually town administration. Yeah. Um, yeah. That makes it clear that it's not all me. There's, there's been some confusion on that in the past. Um, yeah, so uh, this, um, this account is not only for the uh, town administrator and uh, my uh, excellent assistant, Louise, uh, but also general expenses for the town office, including office supplies, copier expenses, the town report, and other um, smaller items. The largest line item, line item increase I'm proposing, $2,600 is for office supplies. I had cut this uh, line as a response to anticipated state revenue cuts, uh, but it was not realistic, uh, given that six month spending, even during the pandemic, is approaching $2,000. Uh, I, I know some items, including a large order of copy paper, were ordered just as FY21 began. Um, so um, 500 of that was uh, sort of not um, not a usual expense. It was just it was just timing to put it into this fiscal year. Um, next, the uh, $1,850 increase in salary uh, is due to my contract and is a rise of 2.5 percent from FY21, um, and that same rate of increases contractually provided between FY22 and FY23. Uh, I do a number of other budgets as well. Uh, a quick note about the audit budget, um, uh, which comes under town administration broadly. I, I didn't even send it out because it's only a dollar, um, but I want to explain a little bit about that. Uh, yeah. Um, it comes, uh, audits are, are an, administ an administrative check on town finances rather than the finances themselves. Uh, we have typically believed that biennial audits are sufficient given their cost uh, and our needs and are currently awaiting a draft of our FY 2019 finances. Uh, so the reason I'm proposing $1 is that there is an audit fund of just over $32,000 uh, due to posting errors from many years ago. Um, therefore, the town will not have to raise audit funds for at least the next two years. Uh, the next town audit will be for FY 2021 and so be performed in FY 2022, but it doesn't show up because we, have, we already have the funds. Uh, the next triennial single audit of the school will also be in FY22. Uh, that's cost about $2,500 in past years. It's not a full-blown audit, um, but it's something we do every three years. Uh, I will note that our three audit contract with our current auditor, Roselli Clark and Associates, will be done this year. It can be useful to switch auditors every five or 10 years so that different eyes look at the books. Uh, details that might be missed by one firm might be noticed by another. Something to consider um, for the next uh, biennial audit. Now the- um, Do we budget a little bit of that every year or do we you know, pay it all in the either one or two years and pay nothing in the in-between years? Uh, we we have budgeted it all in one year. Um, it is an operating expense. It is expected, and uh, the the town accountant would prefer not to be carrying this money over from year to year. But again, because of some kind of posting error, probably before I even got here, there is a uh, somehow the money was not spent out of the audit account. Uh, it, and and then it was it was part of the operating budget, so the audit account just just stayed there, and uh, now there's there's thirty two thousand dollars in it. So uh, now that said, it's conceivable that we'll be paying for 
for this audit, uh, no, let, let me see. Uh, the um, no, it was uh, it was one dollar for this year too. So yeah, so right now we're paying somewhere around fifteen thousand dollars for an audit, and so that um, that fund could be cut in half, and then it could go away after the next two years, and then two years after that, uh, it should be started uh, up again as an operating item. Uh, yeah, I had um, I had suggested coming up with a fund so that we didn't have to have these that sort of larger bump in the finances every two years. Um, but that was not something that the uh, the uh, our accountant thought was appropriate. Um, so that's that's the bit about the audit. Uh, a quick note about the legal budget. One item, uh, I want to uh, level fund it at $10,000. Um, this this last year um, has not uh, involved much legal expense, uh, but there has been a recent increase in activity, mainly due to real estate matters. And there may be there may be uh, more coming in, uh, towards the end of the year. It's it's not something that's particularly predictable, but we do know that ten thousand was sufficient to cover uh, the more expensive years going back. So uh, I think it's it's uh, prudent to maintain that as the level, and so that's level funded. Is, is um, that in your budget, Tom? No, that's a that that's a separate line. But it's just one line, so I'm oh. just putting it out there. Okay. There, there, are, there aren't any sub accounts or anything like that. Okay. Hey, hey, uh, the other thing, hey. yeah. You have a, a $1,200 encumbrance from the from the previous year, and the previous year your expen the expenditures for legal were uh, like nine thousand. Uh, I don't know. I, well, why not jump it up to eleven thousand where it's been for many years? That's my thought. Uh, yeah, we we actually didn't didn't spend that eleven thousand, right? So, um, uh, you spent eighty nine hundred. Yeah. Yeah, th that was that was when uh, we were anticipating having to spend more on a on a legal uh, situation we were in. Um, and it ended up that uh, that cost got uh, covered by our insurance, so um, we didn't have to spend it. Then the um, I've got one more item here, which is the um, IT budget. Do you have the IT budget up now? Yes. Uh, yep. And uh, let's see, the original request for this year, the original request before the revenue panic was 35,663, uh, but that was pushed back to 34,431 in the interest of keeping increases in line with uh, what was felt to be reasonable given the revenue uncertainty last year. So the current request is for 375. 86, which is a 9% increase over the 34, 431. But if we had funded what we postponed in services, maintenance, and equipment last year, the increase this year would be 5.5%. Uh, and, and that uh, represents higher software subscription costs, a rise in the cost of data backup, and again, catching up with postponed services, maintenance, and equipment purchases. So that's why that's going up substantially. Tom, let me add that also because of the, uh, <clears throat> the um, increased bandwidth to the town office and town hall building um, and the increased phone costs due to the maintenance of the ability to uh, have those conference lines and recording on them. Between those two, it's like uh, 15, 1600 bucks uh, increase. Uh, just between the phone and the internet uh, increases 
since uh, since last year. We're we're paying for a Zoom account now. <laughs> well, the, that is uh, the Zoom account isn't even in here, folks. Oh, I, I don't know who's paying for that account. <clears throat> no, this is that, uh, the uh, phone. That's account. in our. Uh, yeah, that's in our COVID account. Okay. Uh -huh. But the phone increase here is just uh, there are four conference lines with recording capability. Board of Health has used them uh, religiously in the past. Uh, you know, it's they're optional. They don't have to be there if we stop using them. And that might uh, salvage uh, 12 times uh, 12 times 60, 720 bucks. So the Conservation Commission uses them for all yes, their meetings, too. That's that's correct. And uh, the current uh, folks use it uh, at times. And it's there in case you got a Zoom failure. <laughs> so, so Roy, just a, about the data star storage and just sort of reflecting back on last week's conversation with our police chief about body cam data storage requirements. Yeah, I know. I honestly... The police department is its own silo. I, uh, uh, except for a uh, backup of his routine uh, email account and a, an image of his, one of his machines, um, I have nothing else to do with the backup uh, there. He's got, uh, I think two at least other machines that are, that are state provided or that uh, tap into state databases, they have their own VPN, um, et cetera. So no, there's just because we're trying to maintain, trying to maintain, it's not always successful, but we're trying to maintain monthly backups going seven years worth, that's 84 months. And, you know, it, it does accumulate um, and, uh, we, there are also five weekly backups. There's 30 some odd daily backups that get stored. Um, and I am actually, as we speak, just because of the increasing costs. And for those who don't know, I, I mean, I'm here speaking now as a, as a consultant vendor. Um, I happen to also be on the finance committee. So um, maybe um, Steve, because we've, I've never even physically met Steve, except for- <laughs> Yeah, uh, likewise. Virtual. So, <laughs> so I, I kind of wear two hats. And um, um, and so, yeah, I, 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 you know, in some, just like uh, Carl, it would be nice if I, these were broken out in more detailed lines, but it is a growing expense. And I frankly don't know what to do about it, except to keep seeking more efficient, more cost-effective uh, solutions. And I have a feeling I'm going to be migrating to one of those, although because of the sheer amount of data, it's not going to necessarily go down. It's just not going to go up as much or with, with uh, you know, th this, this, this number may go up $50 a month every year or something like that, or $75 a month every year. Um, I, I don't have a, a, a uh, an exact handle on it, but. It, it's it's right now the data is stored in the Amazon cloud, um, which is hopefully about as good as it gets uh, in terms of we know the company isn't going to go out of business, um, but in terms of cost, it's not as as cost effective as it could be. So. I don't know if you have any, and then of course the internet, four hundred and sixty-five dollars that covers the town hall, town office, and the fireman's auxiliary. I believe the office three hundred and sixty-five subscriptions have gone up uh, a little bit, um, and some of the uh, anti-malware tools maybe have gone up a tad. Um, and then we have we have the website, which um, uh, there are definitely costs associated with it uh, from, you know, maintenance to the hosting to, uh, to the theme authors, publishers, uh, and the plugin um, providers for that theme. And what so, do you mean by a theme, Roy? What's a theme? The theme is the overall framework that the site uh, uses, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, even, 
even Louise, who is not uh, did not come from the WordPress world, really, but she's catching on pretty well to it because it's a pretty standardized way of doing things once you once you've worked with it, I guess you would say. <laughs> so I don't really I wish that the increase I wish I we didn't have those increases. There's no increase to me. As a matter of fact, I may actually be seeing um, yeah less less revenue uh, as a result of this. But this is just just the, the world we live in. <laughs> um, but it's yeah. because because it's lumped into into one number, it, so you know it's easy for somebody to say, "Oh, he's made." No, I'm not making more money. <laughs> so. You know, Roy, right. you do you do know that this year your Conway Grammar School uh, got Zoom bomb, got a uh, porn bomb, porno bombed in a in a school I, committee meeting. Well, I'm not surprised, but I have nothing to do with that either. I know. If, if they want to involve me in this stuff, I mean, I work with medical practices. Uh, you know, I have uh, a pretty. I'm pretty aware of security issues. Um, you know, the Zoom platform until we got going with COVID was not the most particularly secure platform. It was an easy platform for people to use. And that's why it became so intensely popular. And then in hindsight, they brought more security layers into it. And that's really, really all I can contribute uh, to that. Um, so are, was the school using Zoom at the time or were they using one of the other ones? I, I wouldn't know. Yeah. But the school committee? Yeah. What well, the thing uh, that got Zoom bombed was was it actually? Yeah, yeah, Zoom? no, that was Google, that was Google Meet. That's what I, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean Google. the school has the school has a de dedicated full time IT department with I believe four employees now. That's and, that's the uh, district, the frontier yeah, district. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, which which also covers the the grammar school. Um and, and you know, we we do we do, you know, we we had all the bells and whistles. Um, that that Google that um, you know Google and Microsoft had available, um, and and it, it, and they did investigate. They had a team of engineers that furnished a forensic uh, a, a consult about what happened, and it was three simultaneous attacks from Eastern Europe or Russia. <laughs> and that I thought you were going to say it was a couple of students. From, no. From the no, oh, no, be, be, because it was because one 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 attack was the porno audio and one one attack was the porn video. Mm. They weren't even matched up. The well, nerve. Sounds like a sight. And not that I was experience. not that I was paying that much attention to it, but. Um, <laughs> Phil, so I only raised that because I don't want to trash Zoom when I didn't think they were actually using Zoom at all. And no, no. Blame everything on Zoom now. Well, you know, if you want to get to more secure, there, there's a product. You know, Cisco makes a WebEx. It's a little costly, but that's probably somewhat more secure. I mean, I don't know if it. Well, it does. It, it'll. It could. I mean, Zoom scales out really economically. With Cisco, you'll pay more for more participants. You know, this is a small. What do we have? Ten people here today. Yeah. This is a small size. I don't know what your frontier. Uh, meeting was probably double maybe more i don't yeah I don't. yeah so um, i was on a zoom call with ed markey's campaign with three thousand people yeah. yeah yeah i mean that was impressive it is impressive it's very impressive so yeah i don't think there's you know it wasn't any that your your uh, porn bomb it was nobody's fault i mean other than yeah. the fault of zoom <laughs> And, and uh, the, the, they said they said as long you know a, a, governments are particularly mm -hmm. vulnerable because we publish this yeah. information for the public to go out there and that's just out there for the whole world to see. Yeah, but and, but honestly, what was in it for the uh, for the attackers? God only knows because they didn't make any money off of that. So you know, oh. a, a lot of this uh, you know hacking and stuff is to make money. Um, right. So I don't know what they were doing, except maybe just gathering. Um, you know, there's enough computer power these days, they can actually map out at a very discrete level networks and endpoints, meaning endpoints or a phone, computer, whatever, you know, it's, let's put it this way, it's out there, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the barn door is open, <laughs> it's not, it's not going back so fast, 
And that, that also relates to identities and social security numbers and stuff. Um, you can't get, you know, we got, got more important things to worry about, COVID vaccines, effective vaccines, uh, and, uh, you know, how we're going to put this country back together than, than to worry about uh, a Zoom bomb. <laughs> so I don't mean to make light of it. I really don't. But and I'm sure it was offensive to most, if not all. But um, um, yeah. we had to offer counseling. We had to offer counseling in our schools the next day. Well, were kids part? Were kids in on this meeting? Um, many, many parents and teachers were, and they just had it on their, you know, live. It's 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 broadcast live on our on FCAT the school committee meetings. Uh, oh, that's awful. That is and, really uh, awful. Yeah, and so. But I'm sure, just, you're, I'm sure you're not the only district to, to experience it. No, I know. So I know. I, again, I, if you wanna, wanna come up with a few bucks to get uh, Cisco, you'd probably have less, uh, you know, less, uh, less chance. And there are others. There's probably 20 platforms now that, that host video calls, but none of them are probably as easy to use from, from the terms of, in terms of people, you know, using it, showing screens, et cetera. Um, but I haven't used them all, so I, I can't really, can't really say. I do, I will say this, that we have some town employees that uh, have remote access. Tom is one, uh, Lee, uh, our assessor is another, and they use a, um, an air, Erica, did I set you up? I don't remember. Uh, with a Zoom account? No. Huh? No, not a Zoom account, a VPN. So you can. You oh, can, no, huh? Oh, I don't okay. have a VPN. Well, but I don't, I don't know why, why I would need one. Right, right. But they, you know, they have their own desktops. So they right. get at their desktops when they're home or whatever. And that's as, that, it's through a highly secure VPN. And that's important. Um, it's not a, not a trivial VPN, actually. So. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody has any IT uh, questions, whatever, I'm happy to happy to answer them. Just uh, call me, write me. You know where I am. <laughs> and uh, I have no questions. Okay, no, Erica, I have a question. Did you ever get your email account working? Um, no, I was going to email you about that. I just got like a million sure. other things. Okay. Um, Sidetrack, okay. but yeah, no, I do want to set, I, I want to get that set up so I can get it on my phone. Okay, so let me just spend two minutes just talking. So pe people should know that our email is handled by Microsoft, okay? Uh, it used to be called Office 365. Now it's Microsoft 365. <laughs> um, and we have different levels uh, and we pay different amounts based on the subscription level. And um, I'm embarrassed to say maybe. I mean, Erica is at the lowest level. Bob, you're at the lowest level because it's it's a matter of need. If you need higher level, you got to tell me, and we'll get you a higher level. But in terms of uh, in terms of trying to save the town money, um, that's what what we've done. And all our email is filtered through a product called MailAssure, and uh, MailAssure. Um, does a pretty good job. In addition, so we have two levels. We have Microsoft and we have MailAssure. And uh, we, get, we get that for a very economical price. And it helps us on deliverability of our email. So if anybody has trouble delivering an email to a particular address, you should let me know because I can go into MailAssure and uh, find out why and fix it. So I don't want to say any more because people want to get on with their evening. I'm sure. <laughs> but Roy, uh, you know, I mean, no news to you, but it, you know, because all of our emails are public on our webpage, that there seem to be more and more people who are interested in sending spam to our email addresses. They're all public, our town web, web addresses. I don't know whether it'd be possible to make them less accessible on the town web page uh, like like not having them actually be text if that could they could be all turned into a picture or something like that but the level of spam that we're all getting you know Saudi Arabian princes who have money that they're looking for whatever help getting into this country uh, 
<laughs> I'm not getting those. I wish I was. No. <laughs> okay, so so look, keep in mind, there's there's a huge difference uh, between like uh, spam that wants you to click on. Well, there's a difference between emails that want you to click on a link and they bring you to some place that's really dangerous or they that's download fishing. it. That, no, phishing is different. Oh, okay. Phishing is is you those links aren't in there, but there's something in there. An email adds something to reply to or something where they pull information out of you that way. That is the toughest to suppress because the systems don't have a good way to do it. Now, MailAssure has a human or humans who look at those and try and make sense out of them. However, they need to, uh, are, are any of you getting what's called the scout report? Have you seen that show up in your mailboxes? No. no. Uh, this is a problem I've had with Microsoft because understand we're trying to get these two systems to work with each other. But the scout report shows you what's been quarantined, what hasn't been delivered and and it just shows you emails that are questionable and you can then train it. You can say, this is good email and it will help, uh, or this is bad email and it will help uh, in the problem that you're talking about, Bob. So uh, I am noting that I have to uh, fix the scout reports on this because it's- I mean, it's, I. I've definitely gotten several emails from Tom and from Bob, which I know didn't actually come from Tom or from Bob that, you know, like I have a very discreet task that I need you to help me with. Like, right. Next right. Th those are the ones I mean. I, right. Yeah. And I'm like, I mean, well, I just, that it's, I sort of never ignore those. They're I mean, spoofing, they're spoofing your, right. your uh, email right. address. And on, the, yeah. on that, that side of things, it's important that, um, well, the good, the good news is, that it's kept us off of blacklists for a long time since I started up with Mail Assure, because prior to that it was it was a fight. So um, you know it, it's it's a battle. It's never never a finished thing. And I think if I could start getting the scout reports to you, you would um, yeah. you'd have a good time with them. <laughs> yeah. Maybe okay. And I, I knew, Bob, that even if you were in trouble, you wouldn't want me to get you gift cards. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And anytime someone uses the word discreet, I'm just automatically <laughs> saying yeah. Well, if you look at the email address that it's from, not the name, but the actual email address under the name, you will see it's not me. Uh, right. Yeah. Right. But it's close and enough that you, I, you don't know that. Yeah. And I will note that there was at least one email that got through the system that also spoofed the sender's email address. So it, it's that that gets at least 95% of them. There are some that come through with the correct return email address, and and that that's a lot of work for somebody, and they usually look better. And uh, so so yeah, if it sounds at all suspicious or doesn't sound like the person you're getting it through, not only check the email address, but you know, maybe maybe check with them separately or something like that. Cause boy, uh, they, they can they can spoof the return email address too, and it's happened at least once. And let me tell you, in my illustrious career, I have seen incredibly crafty emails. And um, uh, you just, you know, if, if uh, if your suspicions are raised by any of them, by all means, call who you think they're from, uh, just set them aside, delete them. Um, but better yet, if I, I, I'm, I'm annoyed that uh, Scout isn't working, uh, I will get it working and then we can get them more because uh, there, as I said, there are humans in Mail, at MailAssure. They happen to be in Canada, but there are humans there, Canada or well, Vancouver, I think in Vancouver. Anyway. That's Canada. Yeah, right. That's the Canadians. <laughs> right. Uh, anyway. Boy, um, we're lucky to have you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, I, thank you. Thank you, because it's it's easy to feel underappreciated in this business. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me.
<laughs> I'm sure you 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 know Erica, right? Yes, I know. Okay. I totally appreciate you, Roy. <laughs> well, that's okay. Yeah, I, I I'll take I'll take whatever whatever kudos I can get. <laughs> so yes. So I think you've been abandoned by the finance committee, Roy. But no, Alan. Alan's here. Oh, is Alan still no. here? Oh, oh they're all still yeah, here. Yeah, still here. here. And, and, and change screens on me. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, yeah, our other member. She's, yeah. She's a, yes. I'm sorry. I don't want to try and pronounce your name. <laughs> okay. Because it's how do you say? How do you say four. No, Alan. I like how, do you, how do you say Ms. Peru's name? First name. Oh, Rihanna is her name, Rihanna. Okay, it's well, it's got an odd, it shows up here as Ma, Malika. Malika. Oh, I'm sorry, Malika. sorry. Yes, she has Malika. many names. She has many names. <laughs> All right. Yes, I right, okay. <laughs> so, forgive me. <laughs> okay. You prefer to be called Rihanna, correct? Um, Depends. Uh, when I am oh. with friendly people people or somebody who I know and yeah Malicha get me more close is is um mm. family uh, uh my family put my name when I was little and I use and I I love it it's how it sounds and Rihanna to me sounds very formal it's okay <laughs> No, Malika is Malik, Malika. The Malicha or Rihanna, is either one, either one is yeah. acceptable. I, I, yes. I apologize. I'm sorry if I put you on the spot here because I, <laughs> I just didn't want to ignore you. <laughs> I think this is good. Okay. I have a good friend whose name is Malika. She spells it differently, so I just assumed that it was Malika. Yeah. Malika, but it's not. It's Malicha or Rihanna. Malicha, oh, Malicha. yes. Malicha. Malicha. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad to know that. Yeah, so is there more you. budget stuff we need to talk about? Well, I have one question for Tom Hudges and Tom. Great. You mentioned about the COVID-19 uh, account. Do you know the uh, account code series that Mike Ocella has set up for that? So I'm looking forward and I don't see it in the uh, expense summary report that you know, goes out monthly. Do you know that offhand or should I ask? Yeah. Directly? Yeah, yeah. No, I'll, I'll tell you now. It's 419 Two three nine five five one nine. Thank you. That's it for me. It's enough trouble. So we're good. Yeah. Thank you. See you all next Monday. Okay. Next Bye. Monday. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. Have a, have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Good night. Bye. Well. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Over and out. So are we on items not anticipated? I think we've done uh, all the new business, all the old business. Yes. So the first one was uh, a representative for the MIAA uh, annual meeting. No, I, Eric, I think you're going to go and I'm, I'm going to go. This is a Zoom meeting this Thursday and Friday. Yes. But, so I, I signed up to be the delegate at the business meeting, but we also need to have somebody represent us at the annual meeting. Um, and Tom, you usually do that. Yeah, this is our insurer. So uh, you hear the, the important thing about this meeting is to hear the general outline of where their um, where their costs are going and what they expect for uh, general liability and workers comp going up and down. So that's the um, that's the thing to watch out for here. I'm happy to go to that meeting. Um, usually you get a, a really good free lunch and a free pen, um, but none of that this year. Um, so I'm 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 happy to do that. When when you when you go, could you ask whether whether um, towns might be able to be, uh, get a discount if they have uh, body cams for their police departments? I can ask that without going. Sure. All right. That that would figure into the general calculus of the thing, you know. So. Hmm. Okay. 
And the other, the other item has to do with the, uh, the district local technical assistance uh, preferences at FERCOG. Could you talk to that, Tom? Oh, yeah, we just got, we just got that email this afternoon and they're looking for responses by February 5th, though I called in and complained and they said that they, they, they would take them a week later. So uh, it's not quite as dire as I thought. Otherwise, we just have one select board meeting to discuss it without actually having, having been introduced to it. This is an annual uh, program that the FERCOG uh, channels some money from the state to towns for specific kinds of projects. And they act as consultants, uh, you know, on the order of a few thousand dollars per project to help on all kinds of things. And I sent the uh, form out to everybody, so everybody should have that. You can see what it looks like. And uh, what people should do is go through it and look and see and pick a few things uh, maybe one or two or three from each of the categories first and uh, prioritize those. This is also going to the planning board and uh, goes out um, to uh, public safety departments as well. So I, I've actually already got uh, Chief Baker's form. <laughs> and uh, and uh, typically what's happened is it, it, it is usually not uh, not a long turnaround. So uh, the board has come up with uh, individual priorities and then I've compiled them and, and sent it in. You'll see at the end there's what is your town's top three, what are your town's top three, pi three top priorities? And that's, uh, you know, I'll figure it out from, you know, weighing everybody's vote that comes in. Uh, so, uh, don't check everything off, but check everything off that you think um, the town should be working on. And by the town, I, I probably mean me. Um, though the planning board will be doing uh, some of this very specific planning things. Uh, I know um, uh, we're already working on river corridor planning, and that should continue. So that's that's something that, that will be um, uh, probably a pretty high priority. Uh, so, so take a look at it, and uh, it's on the agenda for next week to discuss, and we can go into it in more detail there, but I wanted to give that introduction so people could get started on it. Do you remember what we chose last year? Uh, several things. Um, I, I can uh, email that out to people. Okay. Great. And also what um, what got funded from whatever we requested last year? If it was even if it was funded? Nothing. 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 Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think I think we're going. Um, yeah, I there there were things that we picked that did not get funded. That's that's definitely the case. Um, I'm not sure it was everything, though. But I'll, I'll, I'll find it and send it out. Great. Okay, time for your update, Tom. Sure. Um, of course, I've been busy on, uh, on budgetary things. Uh, it's coming along, looking pretty reasonable. Don't want to make any predictions at this point, but um, no huge surprises, and uh, we it it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be a a difficult or contentious uh, budget as far as I can see. Um, uh, in departmental news, uh, there's a new electric vehicle charging opportunity that Bob and I are looking into. It involves high speed charging, which is another way of saying very high amperage. Well, public high parking speed spaces. In this case, I think means level two, 240 volts, not, not 400 watt. Yeah, you know, I mean not 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 400 volts at hundreds of amps. It, I'm pretty sure. Um, and yeah, okay, good. But it's not 110 um, volts. Uh, yeah. Um, 
public parking spaces that are open 24 hours receive 100% equipment and installation funding. The longer term questions are the development of a payment policy and the cost of maintenance, including any associated payment system costs. Since these opportunities seem to come along periodically, it, it would be good to have a well thought out policy in place, even if we don't move forward with this particular opportunity. So we're planning to put that on the agenda. Uh, probably not next week, though. Uh, we're already pretty full up for next week. Is this a state? Um, is this a state program or a federal program? It's it's a uh, public-private partnership, and I think it's um, state. Wow. But I'm not sure. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll we'll get you the information. Yeah, can you send us for the for the agenda? There's something to think about: is where do you think we should put a charger or two? The yeah. grammar school. Ball, ball field behind town office, um, in front of town hall, uh, places like that. I remember when, when this came up before, we did ask the grammar, or I asked the grammar school on the select board's behalf. And remember, they took a survey and uh, that there, there was not a single staff member or uh, staff member that would make use of the power charging there at the moment. So I, um, so th they didn't care whether it went there or not, but they just wanted to let us know it wouldn't be any use to them. <laughs> At the time. Well, that's the whole chicken and egg problem. Yeah, yeah you're right. The state's view is that if they put a char if somebody puts a charger there, as an example, it would encourage the teach a teacher or two or whatever to buy an electric car and plug it in while they're at work, and it would yeah, charge so. the day. And uh, they will come. Yeah. So, I mean, the state is really anxious to get more electric cars to lower the carbon emissions. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you ask me, it should be close to the bar or the, or the bakers, but. <laughs> <laughs> what do well, I know? If it's behind the Conway, uh, Conway town office, that would be a good place for it then. Yeah. Maybe not bakers so much. Yeah. Uh, so in other news, uh, we've received a request from Jason Silverman to consider extending his lease for haying on the South River Meadow. I've asked him to reach out to the haying community to see whether a mutually agreed on arrangement can be made. Uh, last time, uh, Gary Topman was the only person, uh, the only other person who was considering uh, who you know might consider hanging it, and they came to an agreement, and uh, Jason took it over. Um, so Jason's working on coming up with with a with a plan that that would incorporate uh, everyone's interest who might be interested in that. And uh, just in in larger financial news, the president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston is projecting a robust recovery in the second half of 2021, uh, which is the start of fiscal year 2022, believing that the start of COVID-19 vaccinations and the new round of government relief spending will allow gains in economic growth and employment. So again, good news for FY22. And that's it for me. That would be good news for all of us. Oh, no, not, not that it's it for you. I mean, the, about the recovery. Any concerns among the selectmen? Well, I mean, I'll just follow up on what Tom just said, just about the prognostication of the uh, economy. I, you know, hopefully that gets reflected in the governor's budget that he's about to be put out because the 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 budget for the schools are, are just our projections are all over from, uh, you know, from in terms of what it would mean to the assessments. So um, we, it, it could be, it could be, you know, it could, it could be a really good year for assessments and it could be a really bad year for assessments and it could be somewhere in the middle, but we don't have any idea right now that we get those numbers from the state. Mm. So, but the, our, our, uh, our constitution of the state says the governor's got to put out his numbers by the end of January. So, We'll see if he follows the law. Any other concerns? No. 
Mail. So did we There's have a lot of that. There was a lot of that just in the past couple of days. We did get one letter. I think Tom sent this out to us. Um, uh, a, a letter that came about the senior center, a letter that came from Lynn Hanley. How does, did everybody get a chance to read that? Um, I could summarize it, um, or it's actually very short. Let me just read it for the record. She says uh, to the select board, since the numbers of seniors in Conway is burgeoning and Conway itself has no senior center, I wonder if the select board would consider entering into an agreement with the senior center of Shelburne Falls that would allow Conway seniors to enjoy the benefits of its resources and programming. I look forward to learning of your deliberations on the matter. So, so you know, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, I do know that the senior center in Deerfield is currently, uh, I believe, still feeding or still providing meals to five Conway seniors every day. And I know that the director of that has personally asked me multiple times to bring it before the select board for Conway to be part of the Deerfield uh, the Council of Aging. And um, I have talked with one person, one senior in town that felt that the Deerfield services were much better than the uh, offered, were much more comprehensive than the Shelburne one. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just what one person said. Well, the road's but, much better for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I've always been struck by the number of people in this town that just that are in their 80s, can't get in or out of their vehicles without help, but still say that they're not senior citizens and that they're not old enough to participate yet. So I, I don't know what it is with the people in this town that just, uh, yeah, we definitely have that going on, though. It's amazing the number of seniors that you talk to that just like, no, I'm not old enough. Like you look at them and you think you're old enough. I really love the idea of a regional approach to, you know, to senior centers and especially in a town like Conway where we, we don't have a dedicated senior center uh, because we have no seniors in town, I'm sure. But just as you just said, we have plenty and we have more every day. Uh, matter of fact, some of us included on the call here. Um, well, I don't know who it was who suggested that we um, talk with um, Pat Lynch because she's um, pretty active in the local senior community. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think that would be something like, I, I, that sounded like a good idea to me that we pursue this. But, but it's also true that if you live on Shelburne Falls Road, it's five minutes to the, to the senior center in Shelburne, but it's a half an hour to the senior center in Deerfield. So, um, or 25, you know, whatever. So it, it is true that geographically for our town uh, something like this might make sense for you know divide it by the river and half the half the town goes in one direction and half the town goes in another I, and if I, I lived in the Williamsburg end of town I would probably be promoting I bet Williamsburg has a senior center too yeah. is there a reason we couldn't do multiple I mean I, I don't know what the arrangement is with Deerfield but that that do they just pay for feeding Conway seniors and I mean, we have no arrangement yeah. with them that I know of. I don't know what the arrangements are. I know that the, that the I mean, we, we should maybe invite the senior, the directors from Shelburne and Deerfield. They would love to talk to us about how we could, I mean, I, I know both of them would, for sure. They both have full-time directors. I know that. Um, well, why don't would, we invite Pat Lynch in to, to get her view and, and we can certainly then have you know, depending upon how that goes, we could we could talk to Shelburne and Deerfield. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's worth pursuing. Yeah, I, I, I would definitely want to consult with Pat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like she's a, a really good resource in this area. Yeah. That sound okay, Tom? Do we have room on the agenda? Yeah. That next week is really yeah, yeah. crowded. Yeah, well, and, and we'll have to go by Pat's schedule as well. I, I imagine uh, she could make herself available. But yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to her and see um, see what she says. I, I know it's come up in the past, um, so I'm, I'm sure she has a lot to say about it. 
Great. Uh, that's well. We we had one other letter that was a, a letter actually that was from the from the uh, from the uh, our our town clerk from Lori, um, and it had to do with the caucus. And I think we've have we have we you know, we talked up, up to Carl about it just now. Um, so is, I don't know if there's any other issues with the caucus. Oh, we were supposed to vote on that. We were supposed oh, to take vote. Well, I have it on the agenda for next week, but um, Lori does now know uh, that the Board of Health is fine with March 1st uh, in the Conway Grammar School. So she's going to draw up the warrant for the election, and um, I think we can just sign that when it's ready. All right. I think Carl said it's on their agenda for next week. I don't think the Board of Health has approved it yet. But um. Right, right. So... You know, you could approve it in principle, contingent on the Board of Health or something like that, but then you have to sign it anyway. So we might as well, you know, put it on the agenda when it's ready. I'm not hearing any big objections, though, to this plan. So, right? Yeah. That'd be great. No. And what about all the, the emails and the Nexam thing? Did you get, did you guys get all those emails? I, I did, although, you know. Like 20 of them? In general, they weren't written to the Board of Selectmen, but yes, there's a lot of emails going around. Basically, there's a lot of anger that the Nexian project exists at all. And, you know, so there's a lot of people that are upset at various aspects of it. Um, and most of those are being directed at the planning board, not, you know, they're not, or not, not at us. Um, well, yeah, there was a couple, there was a couple that were sort of directed at the select board and comments that were made and what people felt were guarantees or whatever. I don't know, but yeah. Um, um, yeah I, well, they were certainly no. directed at me, but I, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, the, the, um, you know, I, I don't, there, I don't know who once told me though, that if you really want to control the view outside your window, you got to buy the land for as far as you see. Um, but I think that's kind of the way it works for a lot of stuff. I mean, don't know, don't know, but yeah, change, change is tough for people. Well, has the planning board weighed in on this? Cause all I've seen are the emails from the, uh, the property abutters, um, but nothing in response from the planning board. Well, the, the, yeah. the, the planning board has been talking with Nexamp about yeah putting up some forms of barriers so that from the abutter homes, they don't look out their window and look up and see and, right. um, the, the, the solar panels. Uh, but but the, the emails that have been going around have gotten much farther, you know, much more aggressive than that. So, and uh, about, uh, uh, you know, about finding small pieces of trash that have gotten washed down in the streams and and about the fact that they're by law, Nexamp is obligated to put a fence around a, a, a fence, and they're putting up a, a, a black fence that will surround them, and they, and they don't want to see that either. So I haven't seen uh, the last email I have um, was from like middle of December. So if there's anything after that that's been that's been circulated, I haven't seen any of that. Yeah, in the past week they've. There's been I, a, I could send you some if, if you if you are, no, are they are they not sending them? I, I mean, they must just be sending them selectively, not to. That's I mean, right. Yeah. That, okay. Right. So I haven't seen. Right. All right. Do you feel like they've singled you out personally? Because I have I haven't seen anything since the. Well, not ever. they're not sending it, to the select board. It's not you know, and it's okay. All right. It's not a select it's board. Conservation issue. Commission. Okay. It's a conservation commission and planning board issue between the two of them. So. Yeah. So we can stay out of it for now. And yeah, the, the head of the planning board did respond. I saw the letter from the planning board that went out. They did respond to people's concerns, I thought. Um, but project's not done, right? So no. it's not, it's not, it's going to look even, it's going to look different. <laughs> well, the, the, the neighbors are to some extent now demanding that they remove all of the solar panels that can be seen from and I'll say from their homes, although, or much more extensively than that. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, 
the, the and the one thing that gets lost in all in in, in the you know the the discussions over what people don't like about a project is that it is a public good to the extent that it, in a town that's very difficult to increase revenue in a town such as ours, um, it is an increase in revenue that is a, a substantial public good. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, we just like to say that on behalf of that project. I do hope, I do hope people's concerns can be alleviated and that, that what they, what they, what they are, um, you know, what they're gonna do is gonna take care of a lot of people's concerns, I hope, I hope. But topography, topography in our town is never, we don't have very many flat spots. And so, so um, you know, I, I don't know whether, uh, is it, you know, absent like 40 foot high fences, is it even like possible to keep everything hidden from view from every road? Yeah. Uh, at the yeah, end, the, the, the question of how many trees you have to stand there and peer yeah. through until you can see the solar panels. And from there is a road in Conway, more in Ashfield than Conway, but there is a road in Conway that if you know where to look, you can see the solar panels. Yeah, my uh, my understanding is that one of the issues has to do with a, a difference between being able to see them from your home versus being able to see them from your property and the property line goes up of course a lot closer than the home and i i don't think anyone's you know uh, expecting a uh, major change but but they have indeed asked for the panels that can be seen and and some some uh some images were going around of of maybe a, a, you know a, a dozen panels something like that 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 were visible from they say their property which is how um they're uh, they're looking at it and so that's i i think where um where some of the discussion is going to go and then the, the road is a is a separate issue so i'm not sure where that's going to go because i haven't seen um i haven't seen that myself yeah. hope it works out be good. Yep. So, let's see. Any other announcements? So, our next meeting is next week, January twenty fifth, again on a Monday, six p.m. by Zoom. Mm -hmm. Be done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just yeah. just a, a slight announcement that um, I, along with Bob and Erica, will be attending the MMA meeting, which is of course uh, virtual. And so I'm not planning to come in on Thursday um, uh, for that for that um, this week, and and I'm I'm usually not in on Friday, and that's also the MMA meeting. So my schedule in town will be curtailed this week. Oh, for for announcements, you should announce Thursday night is the planning board uh, river corridor meeting. I don't yeah. I forget what is that six o'clock? I don't know. Seven, maybe, but seven o'clock, I believe. Seven o'clock, yeah. Yeah, if anybody wants an invite, we could provide them one, or so could the planning board. Uh, oh, it's it's on the really website. On, yeah, it is on the web. There. Yeah, it's on the web page already. Okay, so I'll make a motion. We adjourn the meeting. Second. Okay. Aye. All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. Okay. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.